we, get, we go to an association, and we have a variety of different contacts here. One would be the uh, membership chair. That person's job is to increase membership. So if you join the association or renew your membership, you get a free copy of the book as a thank you. Go to, if you have nonfiction, go to the uh, newsletter editor. That person's job is to put a newsletter out every so often. And so that, that uh, you allow them to excerpt from it. What we do is, instead of paying for that excerpt, we, we barter that for a free ad in the newsletter. So that goes directly to your, your, your target leader with the credibility factor of the association. It's directly the associations, you can just uh, Google that. And Wikipedia, they have a, a lot of these hot links directly to the association. If you're a speaker, you can uh, have them use your book as a, uh, as a speak for the association and also use your book or sell your book or they might buy X hundred books for, for everybody that's in the association meeting. <coughs> so just a lot of ways of, the point I want to make earlier when talking about the reviews, and, and everybody talked about getting reviews on Amazon. That doesn't help you. Get reviews in niche media, niche magazines. And this is a great, if you get have the association review your book in the newsletter. So if it goes to all their members who are potential buyers of your book, then you have the review is directed to somebody who can use that information. So what I suggest is not necessarily trying to get reviews on Amazon. You sell one book at a time. Anything retail, if you want to sell 10,000 books, you have to sell one book each of 10,000 people. Here, you can sell 10,000 books to one person. So it's a lot more profitable, a lot more effective. And it's a um, good way to sell books. So the government agencies, could be the federal government, state government, um, local government. So the FBO.gov, that website, that lists everything the government, federal government buys, when, how, how much they pay for it, and who they buy it from. So it's a great prospect. Also, the government does a lot of work for hire. They'll pay you to create content for them. So the military, Dennis said about this before, but there are a lot of other ways of some of the military. You go to AP, go to APs or Navy Dash Next. Each of the branches has their own exchange, but there are a lot of other military associations, Gold Star Wives, Retired Officers Club uh, Association. And there's the domestic and the uh, overseas military opportunities. They buy a lot of books, particularly for the overseas people. And not just the, uh, the service person. I sold a lot of my job search books to the government, to the, to the military, because the, the spouse of the service person changes, jo changes jobs every two years. They follow the service person along. They needed a book on how to do that. You have books on how to help a child deal with frequent moves. Uh, abuse, uh, addiction, those are, unfortunately, they sell a lot of books like that to the military. So it's not just books about military history, it's books about whatever will help the, the whole family. They want the service person to, to re-up. Going to libraries, uh, this is a, uh, a great opportunity. I got a call one time from a, a prison librarian want to buy my job search book. I said, why? So well, prisoners got out of prison, we want them trained to, to get a job. I never would have thought of that. So I contacted the others, I sold 1,500 books to prison librarians. I actually sold a lot more that kept getting stolen. Ah, but, it was, uh, <laughs> but it's something that I thought, who else is in that same situation? The military. They're in there for a specific amount of time, then they get out and they need to get a job. So I started contacting the forts and bases, did presentations on those, they bought these books and they gave it to the, the people who were looking for jobs, for the spouses particularly. So it was a, a great way to do it. The uh, library tours, we had a client that had a summer free, and is in Connecticut. We have 162 libraries in Connecticut. He got a list of these and contacted a lot of these. And what they did, they, they did a presentation about how to fiction, talked about how to write fiction, and then sold the books at the back of the room. The libraries pay him fifty or hundred dollars honorarium to be there. He sold three thousand books at list price, non-returnable over the course of the summer. Spent a lot of time in libraries. That library tour can be a very effective way 
to make some money to sell a lot of books and have some fun with it. If you go to this publiclibraries.com, you sort it by state and list contact information for all the states. Marla? So if you want to participate in this, you need to order your you need to order your paperback books and have them in your garage and take them. You can't do a print on demand kind of thing. You, you can do a, a, a print on demand in the sense that Marco's question was you have to have your garage full of books to do that. You can print up X thousand or a hundred books every other week if you want. And digital printing is the same price of one or five hundred. So you can have a smaller quantity and just do it on almost an ad, ad needed basis. Just keep a week ahead. Just order X hundred books every other week. So you don't have to have a lot of money invested in it and you don't have to have a lot of money, a lot of books in your garage. Does that make sense? Is that something that it's a uh, important question that you have to you don't have to have a large quantity for this, but it's a great way to make some money. And libraries don't always buy the, the, your book. They have what's called a core collection and a patron-driven collection. The core collection is top uh, fiction, non-fiction, reference books. The patron-driven collection is more what their patrons want. So an inner city library would have a different patron-driven collection than in, uh, a rural library. So your books, I didn't know that. I used to have a mass mailing to lots of libraries. There are 120,000 libraries, only 16,000 public libraries. The rest are niche libraries. So to you know, help lose track of those libraries, it could be a good opportunity for you uh, for uh, religious or law libraries, and Kelly could send some consultant to the law libraries or whatever. Is it 16,000 public libraries? 16,000, 16,000 are public libraries. The rest are niche libraries that buy books. If you get to a Baker and Taylor, then you can uh, do that also. The academic market, the American Reading Company, is a district distributor to the K-12. But there are a lot of other opportunities for um, book sales and homeschooling, particularly uh, distance learning. These are all different places which you can different. But when you know your target reader and finding out where they're going to school or how you can help them with homeschooling, whatever that may be, then you're much more likely to uh, make that work. Okay, let me do a couple quick things. This the reason they come called book books are fun uh, was is now bought by collective goods. But they they set up displays in corporations, uh, in schools, for fundraising, and in uh, daycare centers. But books are, uh, it's collectivegoods.com is the website. And it used to be books are fun. Making your presentation, we'll talk about this this afternoon, negotiating this, uh, this afternoon. Uh, this, talk about this this afternoon, how, how to do that. Can I pass this out? No, I'm just going to the uh, information about this program. Oh, yeah. What, what this is, just some information about several programs I do offer, which is one of these is, is this. And I also run an association uh, of publishers for special sales, just information on that. Just to, uh, what is Sorry, I just rushed through this because we have just a couple minutes left here. I do want to make sure I get to your questions. The problem with doing this in an hour is that it just there's so much information there. Excuse me, I get that look from everybody. It's, it's just, uh, I can't do this. It's just it's, uh, too much to do. But if you break it down into these 10 steps, and or just do retail to start off with, just to find one niche or one one area, one segment to sell your books, and that, that could be a, it's a good start. In, 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 and once you get some momentum going, some sales coming in, it can be very effective. So we have some time left for Q&A now. Uh, some questions? Lee? What about getting your book, uh, uh, suppose you have your book set up through Ingram, and uh, how, how about getting your end buyer here to, uh, to do it directly with Ingram? If you have your books to Ingram, how do you get the buyers to yeah, I mean, uh, as opposed to getting it from Ingram to your garage to your 
to your uh, end to your buyer. Right. Uh, can, can can you give us some of your wisdom about how to get your buyer to sign on to buy your books, but but get them directly from say Ingram? Sure, that's anything retail. You can. They much, much rather buy from a wholesaler like Ingram than buy from each individual offering. So if you contact them, one of the first questions will be, who's your uh, distributor? Who's, and if, if you're with Ingram, that's great, because you have access to, or they have access to a lot of these retail organizations. So if you're in Ingram, that's good. If you're not in Ingram, call on the retailers, and you say that they want to buy X number of books, then you go to Ingram and say, I've got an order for you if I can get into, your, into Ingram. And they'll take you, because they want the order. So there, if you're not in, Ingram, not in Ingram, you can get the order first and, and go there. Uh, when you're calling on <laughs> corporate buyers, what I found, you get, a lot of times you get voicemail. You call up and the receptionist will say, what's the nature of your call? You know, I'm gonna sell leads, but I'll see my books. Boom, right into voicemail. So have that good 20 second voicemail message. But what I do, what I found that works for me, this is not deceptive, it's creative. That uh, now some people have said this deceptive. What I do, I'll, I'll say, can I speak to accounts receivable? Okay. Hello, accounts receivable. How do I get you? I'm trying to get marketing. Could you switch me over to Jason right now, please? And they, they switch you right over. They don't want to talk to you. They switch you right over to Jason. And uh, usually, the, in an earphone, they pick up. They don't. It doesn't go to voicemail. So that's. I use that very much. And would you would not get a handout to one one. It, it works. What? So that's that's the ways to get into the internet. Jason? Uh, I'm not the marketing department, but anyway, uh, <laughs> it was a joke. My question is, so uh, let's take this idea of associations. So what would be your recommendations in terms of strategies in the sense of, a lot of times the associations will have uh, a webinar, they'll have a newsletter, they'll recommend your book to their members, um, and to what extent do you think it's more important to say, here association, I, I want to be in your newsletter, I want to be in your webinar, so I'm recommended, and then the users go to Amazon to buy the book versus the association um, being on the hook to buy a bulk order? Because in my experience, associations are pretty reluctant to shell out that big dollar amount uh, out the gate, but they have a lot of influence over their members in terms of, hey, check this out, that sort of, sort of publicity. Uh, I guess I'm trying to say sort of the associations have one thing to give you, which is free publicity. They have another thing to give you, which is a, a book, book sale, sure. so to speak. Associations are a great way to sell books. They may have a bookstore on their website, so you can sell that way. Uh, you can, uh, they send the, the information in their newsletter. You might have a link to Amazon. If a uh, if you contact a meeting planner, then they may have you in to speak at the association. Then you have the bookstore at the back of the room. Get a local bookstore to come in. They can sell your book. They don't sell their books. So then you get the, the credit. A lot of people don't like the corporate sales because they don't, they don't get that seller's credit for it. But you can set these programs up so a company could give you we get a one-time use code, and then you go to Amazon, and they send out these one-time use codes, and they sell 10,000 of them. That's how you get the credit for it. We do that, we're doing that with a bank right now. <laughs> their objective is to bank and, and uh, contact their, their customers, their prospects, their employees. We're setting up a private label, or a labeled uh, uh, website, and it looks like their bank. And they hand out these one-time use codes and people can go there and download books for free. So you can set that up through Amazon also. So there are ways of coordinating that to to get, you want the bestseller status through selling books to the Which Amazon. is more valuable? Or do you not, I prefer, do you not have like it? It's, it, you make more money to sell directly to them, not going through Amazon. In our experience, we've been to make more money going directly to the company, not going through Amazon. And just another money award. If they don't like it, they may send it back to Amazon. Not an ebook, but a, a, a print book. It's just, I just prefer going directly to them. We do that for our clients. We just sell the books and they're gone. And you get the repeat orders too, which is really good. Yeah, 
also do affiliate. You do affiliate programs with the uh, cause marketing, with the so to speak. If they, if your content is associated with the cause, then you can work with them. They may allow you to use their logo, or they may have a link on their website to your website or to, or to Amazon. So there are associations, a lot of ways they you can, can work with them. Also, the sale. Excuse me. Or they can make money on each sale as well. You could set that up as, as an affiliate type of thing where the sales yeah. go through their link and you know that, that they get a donation back yeah. for every book sold. You can do that affiliate program. Don't offer a fixed amount per book. Don't say, we'll give you a dollar per book. Give a percentage of profits. Because then you're, you're, you're paid, and then the profits come out. So if you say, we'll give you a dollar a book, and you discount the book, you could be losing money on your sale. So we just found a percentage. So, but what I mean by that, you work with the association, and you donate a percentage back to them if they promote your book. Do that as a percentage, not as a fixed price. What do you feel is a reasonable, fair, Amount to be, uh, donate back. What do you feel is a reasonable, uh, you know, fair amount to donate back to the uh, organization? We've heard ten percent, but I mean, is, does that sound realistic? Ten percent is you, you pay a, a, a rep, a great rep, and you pay ten percent. It's negotiable. One of my favorite answers is it depends, because it depends. If they if they will do a certain amount, they will actually actively promote your book. Might give fifteen percent. They just do a link to your website. Give them five percent or ten percent, or maybe make it graduated. Five percent for the first five thousand books. Ten percent for the next five thousand books. Fifteen percent. So the more books sold, the more money they make. So they have a uh, a reason to to sell to to promote it, push it. Thank you. I guess, uh, what are you going to cover in the afternoon that you haven't covered now? It's more, more how, to, how to. This is basically what Pardon to do. Me? This is basically what to do. This afternoon will be how to do it. So it'll be a lot more information about how to actually make this work. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I think the name of Spark, I mean, they, oh, you're automatically accepted as a distributor. Is that correct by England? Yeah, if you're in England Spark, yeah. 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 We're introducing next week uh, my, to my association of publishers for special sales, Book Selling University, where they, you can go there to the on-demand classes on right book marketing topics. England Spark and Publishers Weekly are both sponsoring that, too. So it's uh, something that will be up at the end of the year, and I'll tell Becky about it. Not here very well, Becky. Um, just going to uh, send us some information about the upcoming book. Book Selling University is coming out where, where VAPA members can get discounts for that. But just the England Spark comment reminded me that England Spark and Publish Weekly are, are sponsoring this Book Selling University. So we'll make sure we block that out as soon as we get that information from Frank. Mark? Is the, um, is the 250 per book or per client? It's 250 per the first title, 175 for the second and 125 for every title after that. Uh, just on that, uh, if you want to email me, just at book marketing or book app, or just bookmarketing.com, Brian Judd at bookmarketing.com. Uh, just, if you just uh, email me, or if, you, if it's on that, that, that sign up sheet, or email me, Bob, and I, I can um, send you a copy of the slide. If, if you're not self, I mean, if you're not printing on demand, you can still work through Ingram Sparks, correct? For distribution? If you're not on brand mission, okay. probably be more profitable. Yeah. No, Ingram is still here. Ingram will take anybody, not anybody. You have to have 10 titles for Ingram to be in the Ingram. But they take any publisher. Yeah. Any publisher that has. That um, thank you. I guess ten titles. Yes, Tom. Are you going to tell us why you deserve everybody? Uh, <laughs> I just when when we're going around, I just uh, Patricia and Patricia Diana.
just as Anna Lynn, and I just, I just do it that, that way all the way to the end. He listens and, uh, really well. <sighs> That's one, That's right? Yeah, it's, it's just something that, um, so while I let you know that I, I really want to help the way that I'm trying to communicate that fact, that I'm, in, I'm not just here just to have a nice trip to California, which is nice, but it's something that I really, this is a great way to, do, to, to make a lot of money. I've done it, and I want to help you do that. That's what that, uh, I've never done it with a, book, a group this large before. That was, that was kind of a, a test for me, but uh, I think that I just try to communicate that fact that I, I'm here to really to help, not just to have, have lunch. Are there others who wanted to sign up for the slides or newsletter that yeah. didn't get this yet? Or just email me. Uh, again, it's Brian Judd at bookmarketing.com. How do you spell Judd? A lot of people will, will send me my email accounts to J U D D. That's what I got. No, not related to Ashley. But, uh, okay. Are there any other questions before we go? Oh, Steve, that's first. So this is just actually relating personal experience. I've been a member of APSS for, I don't know, a year, probably now. And, in, you know, I haven't sold 10,000 books or anything like that. But I have used a number of this, the things that he offers. And my experience has been that this organization is um, pretty straightforward and honest. You know, if you're, if you're looking at marketing and publicity stuff, there's a whole spectrum from honest to way dishonest. And my impression of Brian and his organization has always been that it was um, really straightforward and that they do what they say they will do. So I just wanted to let you know that. Thank you very much. So I guess we're at a point where we're going to say thank you for this morning presentation. And uh, this is also um, the moment at which those of you who have not yet signed up for the afternoon, it's not too late. You can do that by just going back to the table over there and seeing David or John or Val and, and get signed up. If you're not able to be with us uh, for the afternoon, thanks for being here for the first part, and we'll see you hopefully next month. Thank you, Brian.